Hi, welcome to your ultimate source for VR game news. We had a little summer break during the slow months, but things are picking up pace again and we are back, baby. There were only two noteworthy releases on August, which we'll have a short look at before we get to the new stuff coming in September. On August 1st, the sequel to Zero Caliber released as a Quest exclusive. This is a military shooter with a short campaign that can be played in up to 4 player co-op and a few PvP modes like Free For All, Team Deathmatch and Siege. Not many reviews out there, but Upload VR gave it a go and they actually liked it. Quote, Zero Caliber 2 is an excellent follow-up to an already decent game, offering a 6 plus hour campaign complete with 4 player co-op, PvP and native mod support. X3 Games has delivered an experience that will undoubtedly thrill fans of the genre and keep them coming back for more." End quote. There is a Steam page, but x -Real Games stated that they will only bring the game to PC if there is demand for it. But the studio does not have the best history with the PC VR audience, so I kinda doubt that many PC players will be too excited for this one, at least I am not too excited for it. The Burst is a parkour shooter that arrived on August 8th on Steam and the Quest. I played a demo a while back and for the most part enjoyed it, but the launch did not go so well. No critics reviews to be found, but on Steam it currently sits at a pretty disappointing 48% mixed rating from only a handful of reviews. Pretty much all reviews, even the positive ones, point out the janky and buggy state the game shipped in, so better wait a bit and see if the devs stick to it and bring the desperately needed polish. I probably don't have to introduce the Hitman series, everybody's favorite game about uh, uh, an assassin. So the PC version has official VR support for a while now, and that sucks. It, well, it doesn't suck that it has VR support, but it's a very janky and straight up not good port. But it does have its fans, simply because the base game is just that good. People have been enjoying this piece of jank. That there was a lot of unfulfilled potential did not go unnoticed by Studio IO Interactive, who this time gave the project to a dedicated VR developer, XR Games, who did their best to rework the game for VR. That's the good news. The bad news is that this will be a Quest 3 exclusive. Being made for mobile hardware, you have the very obvious visual downgrade. Even cutting Quest 2 support apparently did not help much. Also, this is only Hitman 3. On PC you can play the complete world of Assassination Saga in VR, so Hitman 1, 2 and 3, including the roguelike freelancer mode. We can only hope that they will take some of the VR mechanics from this, which do look pretty good, and bring them to the PC port, and maybe even a PS5 version, right? That would be nice. Doubtful though. Hitman 3 VR Reloaded comes exclusive to the Quest 3 on September 5th. But no one is untouchable. Rampage Agents is a free-to-play VR battle royale, at least that's what it says on the tin. But Hidden Inside is also a co-op roguelike shooter, not unlike Gunfire Reborn. The game is out in early access for nearly a year now. You have access to an expanding roster of heroes with unique abilities, so the BR is more Apex Legends than Fortnite, but very few people actually play this for the Battle Royale. That's why you mainly play against bots. At least for now, maybe the full release will change that. The more popular mode is the roguelike, which is not free to play by the way, you'll have to buy that in-game. Team up with up to two other players and shoot your way through a randomized series of rooms. Between your runs you can buy upgrades so that you'll be able to master higher difficulty levels over time. Rampage Agents will hit its full release on September 5th on the Quest and on Steam. There's still no word about a PlayStation version. Life is a continuum of happenings. Some events change the world forever. Even the grandest incidents are just a series of moments. In Chernobyl again, you explore the eponymous power plant and the city of Priyapyat in order to unravel a conspiracy and ultimately prevent the nuclear catastrophe. 
This is a puzzle adventure game. There's a detective element to it, there's time travel and multiple realities involved. The game uses photometry scans to create realistic looking environments and at least in the trailer looks awesome. The developer states that they have made several trips to Chernobyl themselves to truthfully capture the atmosphere of that place and recreate it in VR. That's a pretty cool setting for a puzzle game, color me interested. Chernobyl again releases on September 12th on all major VR platforms. Another early access graduate, Mannequin, is a 2 vs 3 prop hunt type of game. An alien presence has caused certain sites to be frozen in time. Two elite agents are sent to these anomalies to hunt the aliens hiding inside of them. As the alien, you can turn yourself into a mannequin to hide among the frozen humans. You'll have to strike a pose that seems inconspicuous to avoid detection. It is your goal to freeze the agents in time by touching them. As the agents, you'll have to shoot the aliens, but first you'll have to find them. Shooting a real human will jam your gun, making you vulnerable for a time. Mannequin is out in early access for a few months now. On September 12th, the game will hit its full release on Steam and the Quest. The release version will not bring anything new content-wise, but will come with a few performance and stability fixes, as well as some quality of life improvements. Astro Hunters is a PvPVE extraction shooter. From the mothership, your home base, you drop onto an open map to gather resources and loot. There will be a choice of PvE enemies lurking about and other players who might or might not be hostile. If you die, you lose everything you brought. If you can make it out alive, you can use your gains to upgrade and customize weapons or just sell or store it. The game released about a month ago on Steam. The reception is not the best. It, it currently sits at a mixed 63% from only a handful of reviews. While players see potential, the general perception is that the game is just not ready, that it feels like an early access release, but it's not. There's a lot of jank to iron out. There's also only one map so far, though the roadmap says there are two more maps to come in the future. Astro Hunters VR is available on Steam and comes to the Quest on September 19th. So if you're looking for a Ghost of Tabor alternative, this might be one to keep an eye on, but give it a bit of time to get fleshed out a bit more. The land of opportunities. The committee assures you that the Vitorsk security zone is under total control. This segment is about the original Into the Radius, not the sequel, because it's coming to the PSVR 2. Into the Radius is a roadside picnic inspired shooter that merges Stalker's open zone exploration with single player extraction gameplay and Into the Radius is incredible. It's one of my favorite VR games of all times, the immersion, the atmosphere are unparalleled in VR gaming. But beware, Into the Radius is also a pretty scary game, it's not for the faint hearted. Barring any potential fuck ups in the PlayStation port, this would be an absolute must buy recommendation for your PSVR 2 players out there. So there is a sequel in the works that is actually already out in early access on Steam, but it's in a very early state of development and will take a hot minute until it's ready. The studio CM Games have clearly stated that they will finish the PC version of Into the Radius 2 before they consider ports to other platforms. I would guess it's going to be roughly two years or so until you can expect to see the sequel on the PSVR 2. Enough time to get acquainted with the first part. Into the Radius 1 releases on September 19th for the PSVR 2. It's available on all other VR platforms, just in case you somehow miss it or you are new to VR. Ever wonder where you'd land if you fell so deep into sleep to a place beyond imagination? Where am I? where the very fabric of reality unravels. 
Escaping Wonderland, a sequel to Down the Rabbit Hole, is an Alice in Wonderland themed third person puzzle game. I liked the first game, it was definitely more tailored towards a younger audience, but it was quite charming. The games have this unique style, you as a player and observer look at quaint little dioramas through which you lead the game's protagonist while sometimes interacting with the game world directly. At least in the trailer it looked like the first person interaction, sparse in the first game, plays a more central role here in the sequel. As Gaming Wonderlands is coming only to Quest and Pico on September 26th. There's no turning back now, is there? No, I don't think there is. I tell you, it takes a lot of rage to stare across eight realms of hell, an ocean of demons, into the eyes of the red judge, and still think, I'm coming for you. Metal Hellsinger is a first person rhythm shooter with a lot of doom energy. Rampage your way through hell to regain your stolen voice. Attacking on a beat will do extra damage, doing anything on a beat will keep the fury meter up. The flat game released 2 years ago and it's pretty awesome. There is actually a VR mod for that which I did play and also did a little feature here on this channel. My main problem with that was that the performance was pretty awful at least on my system so yeah, I ended up playing mainly on a flat screen. But performance problems aside, it was hell of a lot of fun playing this in VR. Having a better optimized and more fleshed out version of this would be incredible. Metal Helsing of VR is coming to Quest on September 26th and to Steam and the PSVR 2 on October 3rd. The PC and PlayStation versions will be full separate purchases, so if you already own the flat game, you'll have to buy again. That's all from me this month. Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments. If you want to support the channel, just leave a quick like or consider subscribing if you haven't already. See ya.